Hey guys, it's Carnifex, another nerd this video. Today I show you how I got three stars. I didn't even I didn't need three stars, but I got three stars on the Soleus Tier 7 event with no gear 10 characters. Without having max abilities on every single character. And uh it was basically one one switch. I was talking to a guildy and uh and they made a suggestion based on something they had done. Um but basically I got to it. So that three stars. Now, for those of you who have watched my videos before, you know that there is not a single character on this account that is above gear nine. Just to show, right? There's no, there's no characters above gear nine. There are some that have a couple more if they're really easy pieces. I'll show you like that. Like little blue pieces are very easily farmable purples. But even like the the like the magic damage hoods and stuff. Even those, I don't put that on every character. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you who I did it with. Now, I will say a couple things about this is there are still a lot of ability investments made on some of these characters. Um, and so, and it uses hard work. So two major disclaimers, right? This is not necessarily the free to play friendly one uh, team that you can use. And I will say if you use Rantha because of the fixes that they made to Nightingale, because before in the first time around, she would actually remove her own attack buff, Solius's buffs, and that helped save a ton of damage. I mean, lower the damage output, right, by a third on her uh, on her big old special that comes around to wax people. That was really helpful. Uh, that's not happening anymore. And even though her uh, dispel now has been fixed, it changed so it can be resisted, it still didn't happen at all. So it's a harder event than it was the first time around. Um, and so anyway, this is how I was able to get it done. And uh, without a time, basically the, the, the time investment went into the setup. Once it was set up properly, it only took me, it was only my third time where I was able to clear it. So I'm going to go through the characters here. I'm going to show you what they got, show you like the rune setups that I have, show you the abilities that I have, and, uh, and we'll, we'll get to it. So hard work. And I will say this is, this is like the hardest part of it. No pun intended, right? Uh, you need, you really do need all these max out. Not only does this give him a 100% chance to apply bleed, which is not only good for doing some damage, but also, again, because it bleeding uh, it creates an additional 10% damage for any physical move that uh, is done uh, after it, uh, that's really significant. Uh, getting the additional round of ability block is huge. Whenever that lands on the... the um, uh, crap, the, the cultists and the healer, like that is so huge. You you need that on there, or you're just asking for a lot more. Getting the damage increase is so significant. These guys don't hit that hard. Um, you really need the final level in this. And here, um, if you don't, I mean, this this is probably the one you can most afford to not have because you kind of get lucky, and there will be just like someone who doesn't need one removed or a couple removed. So if anywhere you need to kind of like, hey, man, in order to hit some of these other periods and other characters, I got it. I would say you definitely got to max these three. They're so significant here. You don't need to, but it removes a lot of RNG from it potentially. Um, and I ran him with, so this is speed and this is crit damage and this is potency. I uh, ran him with damage and crit chance set because even though his potency sucks, uh, the tenacity on these enemies sucks too. I never had a single thing resisted whenever I was using at him. Now I did add some secondaries with potency. So you can see it totals out to almost 30%. But basically if you're rocking, you know, 29 plus percent, I never had something resisted. Maybe there's like a one to 3% chance, something like that. Maybe say they're at 32% tenacity or something. Uh, I never had something resisted in the initial uh, wave with all the ads. Um, but I'll just kind of go through... Uh, so you, people can go back and look, right? Uh, physical damage over 3k with everything. Crit chance is almost 30. Crit damage almost 175. Um, health almost 19. Uh, shield at 16.5. Speed at 176. Um, so he does have some solid secondaries. Nothing crazy, but he has some, you know, he has a primary, which is a lot of, and then he has an average of about two on each. So really manageable. Um, some good potency secondaries, so. though. Um, I have a lot of that on. So th this is gold. Whenever you get something like this, 
on the the speed room because that's where you don't have to worry about getting speed secondaries right so really getting good speed rooms um on those two stars can be really helpful that might be the thing you need to farm as you can see none of these here these are all pretty i mean geez these overthrowers are but a bayes i mean there's this is all tougher years so i didn't put any of that on them uh tromgar so here's how you do it you do it with a tromgar lead I actually ran, as you, you saw earlier in there, there's no Rantha. Rantha's actually the person you cut for this. And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, the two low men on the totem pole are Mar and Corcoran. Both Mar, when you have to have his AoE max, you really do. Unless it can, you just want to invite so much headache. Because here's the thing. Technically, Trombar could stun every single person that attacks him. There, That is possible. Um, technically, every single one of your characters could dodge every attack, but you would have to do millions of attempts to get to that point, unless you get really lucky. So, I definitely did not do this absolute bare bones, but I did try and do it with, with no regrets. That's the best way I think I can put it, is no regret, um, no regret ability investment. Um, so this lead is really good because not only does it boost the potency, again, like you have characters like, um, Hardor who don't have the greatest base potency. And so whenever you add this to it, I should have mentioned that when I was doing hard work, uh, but he, everyone's getting this bonus, bonus potency. So it's possible even I could change something on hard work, but I just kind of left it. I didn't have a problem. Whenever an allied orc inflicts a debuff on an enemy, all orcs recover 5% health for each debuff inflicted. So really significant. Um, you gotta max out this. The bus plus 10% stun chance. Way too good. Uh, being able to have this on initial cooldown, again, because you're not running with Rantha, you don't have any delay there. And even then, even if you were running with Rantha, unless your Rantha is crazy geared, in which case, so is probably everyone else, and so you don't need the help of this guy to be able to do this. Um, you need, you need this to be available on turn one. So... You gotta have that. I left it at fours here because those are the, the you know you get the second stack of regeneration, you get the second buff removed. That's really valuable. Uh, you certainly can go higher, and you can go higher tier. It's up to you. These are not bad; they're just not super valuable. And again, everything here it's all shackles, bayes, curse madness, uh, the hammer, uh, gates. You know it's so it went all health here. And with uh, potency as a primary, again, I just didn't want to have to worry about it. I could have gone in and worked on what, like, the tenacity level was for everybody, and that may even be posted somewhere, but these these runes aren't specific. I didn't, that's And that's part of the thing, too, is I didn't even tune these runes specifically to this event. These are kind of general purpose for all things right now. I will be changing hard work once I go to T7 testing, but I haven't done that yet. So all health, um, and, uh, and here he did get speed. Uh, so running through this again. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not going to like kind of repeat everything. I'm just going to leave it a little long enough so you can pause it later if you want to look at what the stats were. Um, and I'm going to go into it here. Next, you're going to use Mar. So um, getting it to five, this is a, this is a pretty significant boost. Uh, I like that. That's a valuable one to me. Here, being able to repeat this is so massive. Whenever you're la able to land ability block and stun and stuff to stall out the healer, the main problem this team suffers with, I mean, as soon as more Doom is on this team, this event is a joke because you can cleanse the taunt from that tank and you're just, it's a cakewalk. Um, but until then, you got to find ways around the freaking taunt that you can't, you can't stall it out. You have to taunt with Trumgar. He's always, the tank's always going to taunt on its first turn. You can't stun him or anything. You're done. You got to get around it. And Mars, the best way to consistently get around it. Um, he does have some pretty, they, he might actually have the best runes of the whole crew. Um, he's got some pretty significant speed on there, but basically he's got, uh, speed rune, right? He's got, I got, I, I lucked out on a couple of runes here. Um, and then, but as you can see on other ones, I intentionally kind of shorted it cause I didn't want it to get too crazy good, even though there is a good crit chance secondary on there. So running through, right? Again, I'm not going to go over literally every word again, like I did that first time. Um, just so if anyone wants to pause at some point, they can go through and see what I had them at. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, let's finish up these. So this is a, don't, you do not need this. You do not need this. You do not need this. This boosting the crit damage though, because I run him with a crit chance rune, um, because whenever he has a 60% chance to crit, 
you give him this, he's basically got a 100% chance. So um, the problem is, you're not going to be able, after the second round of this, this drops off. And that's why I want to give myself at least a chance of being able to roll even a third, a fourth one off um, in order to keep that chain going. But whenever you get that crit damage increase, I mean, you really need that to have it get as much high damage. Um, I didn't find myself running into a lot of damage with Mar. So I'd, I think getting up to here is really cheap and affordable. I would not say that you need to go beyond that. Um, so you can look Corkrum here. Really, the only thing we're maxing is this. Because that you go from 30 to 50% stun chance. Really significant. Uh, while you certainly could make the argument for boosting this more to increase the number of burns that Corcoran is generating in order to you know get to the point where you're literally guaranteeing yourself, hey, unless they resist and he's gonna have bonkers potency. Um, unless they resist, this dude is gonna be healing Tromgar for 5%. Uh, you will never use this ability in this turn, unless you were for some reason decided that you wanted to do this and the effects actually came into effect, well, sure, then you would, but you should not. That is a very regret heavy ability. I do not do that. Uh, you can do this a little bit, but you really got enough potency coming from it. So I just did, uh, from, uh, Trungar's lead and from the runes. So I just kind of gave it to, um, uh, I gave it to, and then again, you can boost this up more, but you don't have to, I didn't have to. And so you already got a three-star clear on that. I wasn't even barely like, scraping it. Everybody was maxed out when I, in health and stuff whenever I finished. So, again, running through all this. For anyone who wants to check, then you just kind of freeze this. Boom. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. honestly, I could probably take these runes off but and change it from potency. But, again, these are more general use runes. Um, and it's even have a potency primary on there. So... Uh, way more than needed potency. This is the thing I'm happiest about. Mortha is not good. As soon as we get Renara, you, there's really no point to having Mortha ugh, other than unlocking Soleus. And even then, you might be able to actually get around it using Rantha, because Rantha's at least useful for T7. Um, uh, the T7 era char raid. But, uh, 2433. Three really low investment. Um, and one of the nice things on the gear for this too, so literally to get all these orcs to this gear level, let's go back real briefly, you need two Bayet belts, you need two separate like additional shackles, and you need two Curse Madness. So of all those things, even if you're fairly early game, you got four of those you know, it's essentially four large components being the four shackles that you can get from farming challenges. Obviously, not necessarily in the next 10 days or whenever we have the event, but you can literally get it from that. Very easy. For the Bay uh, Belt recipes, you can farm that relatively early on. Let's see how... Um, I know Tromgar needs some Bay A's. Let's see what exactly... What... Uh, so, 7-4, right? You're not even in the final stage. Um, it's before you get to the crazy Rebel node, which isn't even as bad now because they fixed Wonder Lula. Um, you can get here without that much effort. Um, uh, and then the, the two Curse Madness, the two Curse Madness you will probably need to buy unless your team is uh, running the applicable level of the raid. Uh, in which case, hey, you may not even need to do that, but... Uh, that's all you need to get this team to gear 9. That's pretty generous. There are a lot harder characters to get to gear 9, especially over the course of a um, of an entire race of you know for five characters. So, yeah, I'm going to run through this guy. I was probably a little too quick there. Okay. And boom. So I'm going to go through. We made, It depends on how quickly this lands on the setup that you need. Uh, whoops. Let's go back. Okay, so again, just run it like this. Diesel rog is garbage. Don't use diesel rog. That's it. What's the word? Load up. What? So I found that it did help to have Hard Work be my fastest character. 
Um, just because, again, like his two specials, right? The, these are huge for you. Anyways, you're going to come up sooner is great. Um, but also, it means that he gets to drop his... And I played around between dropping the bleed on the tank and dropping it on one of the two mages. I just kind of went for this one. Uh, but I, I decided on, you want to go after the mage that essentially you're going to try and kill first. You're going to have everyone hit with their basics. That's all they got, right? Now these stuns come around. Now here's where you need at least one of these mages to get stunned. If it doesn't happen, literally, just boom, boom, boom. You got to do it again because there's going to be too much damage up. And this is stuff you can find on Bia DC. Uh, they, they go into kind of like, I don't remember if they actually include math on it. But this is something that they bring up there, so I'm definitely taking into consideration some... So I'm pulling together various uh, sources for this. Um, I don't want to make it sound like I came up with it all on my own or anything. Um, so, right here, boom, boom, boom. Smacking again. Again, I won't do this too many times. Um... Come on, give us just one. Even if you get two, it's actually a bad thing. Of course he gets dodged. The amount of times uh, me me and another guy are going to do a, a video where basically after we get some content, uh, the dodge rate is not actually 2%. It's simply not. I, I've done enough smaller samples to feel very confident saying the, the effective dodge rate is higher than the 2% that is asserted by the stats. I don't know why. Um, with, I couldn't without seeing the code, but Anywho, we'll give this one more shot here. I really would like to not have this take forever just to try and show you. Come on, give us a stun. All right, there we go. Right, so he's going to taunt. There's no way to get around that. Throw the bleed up here. Now he's going to be hitting the bleed. So this guy is about to come around and use his AoE. Uh, you're probably not going to actually take any damage from this in your health the first time, other than Tromgar. Um, her heal is just not that strong anyway. Um, and initially, people are not going to have... Uh, the, the only um, debuff you're going to be getting here is from these two guys, right, on their basics. So I actually like going ahead and healing there. Um, throwing the burning. Nope, didn't get it. Dodge. Okay, so here it comes. You need to land... I mean, you don't need to, but I'm, your life is insanely easier. You've got to get it on the healer. And ideally, you get it on the mage that got stunned the first time around. So this time we got it. We didn't get it on the healer. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so just because we're not to the point where we have enough healing to trigger the... Um, the healer, I'm actually going to leave it for right now. I'm not going to use the stun. And the time I was successful, I did stall out Corcoran stun. So let's see how much farther we can get here. Uh, definitely do not be afraid to use the regen. There's a reason you got it. Boom. Okay. And just because I feel like we need kind of like the little heal up too. Uh, I am going to go ahead and drop the stun. And hopefully we get the healer in there. Cool. Uh, woo -hoo. And see that cheat death saved us right there. Okay. But here's, again, that, that mage is about to come up. Is the mage that already uses AoE. So we should be okay. We got some good healing in. Let's bump up Corcoran. Uh, does he have stun and burning on? Yes, he does. Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and use it. Boom hypothetically potentially helpful all right so we definitely want <laughs> uh man we might lose trom here oh the cheat death so clutch okay um let's just see if we can stun no we're gonna be able to stun the healer he's gonna be able to pop this off in a second here i feel like ah it's okay uh go ahead and use this mostly for the heal up um, got a lot of these coming around. Let's just see if we can get the stun. Nope. Uh, we're going to go ahead and crank this out again. 
the real people that I want to take out at this point are because um, we can kind of control the mage. So let's go ahead for the arch. Gosh. Okay. And then by the time, again, it's like you come back around, he's got the cheat death back up. Hopefully Tromgar's able to sneak in here. Save us. Garbage little heal. Now at this point, I'm thinking I'll probably save that. Let's just kind of get these little punks closer. So I can kind of leave that guy. He's going to die off on his own. I am The Mage Master is going to have his, uh, his special back up, though. So we want to make sure this puppy isn't actually able to use that again. Uh, let's give Tromgar a little more shield. Um... Go after this guy, give herself the regen, more health to Tromgar, boom. Go ahead and finish it. And I know I'm doing a little overkill here because I could probably just leave him to die at this point. But um, again, that's on purpose because the healer doesn't really do that much damage. And I am actually going to go ahead and burn the special. Burn the heal. Burn the damage boost. And hopefully Corcoran's able to come in like a hoss here and finish his puppy off. That was really good. Really good timing. So we can roll right into this. Do some good damage. It's still better to do that than his basic. Um, hmm. Because remember, 90L's going to cleanse this. Uh, but Corcoran has his stun up. So we're going to go ahead, hope we get double up here, and then maybe we'll get lucky and Corcoran will get a stun off on at least someone. You want to go for 90L first. So let's see if we can get at least one stun. Cool. Uh, because even though she uh, was able to get that down. Okay. Now, if you don't land that first ability block on Solius, this can be a bit more frustrating uh, just because he's going to apply crazy heals. Um and you really do want to essentially just prioritize burning the crap out of Nidiel. Obviously, if you have the ability to taunt with Tromgar, do that. Oh, that was brutal. See, that? that's what I mean. That smack is so much harder now. Um, now that she's not taking it off of herself. Um, I am... Let's a little heal. Oh, uh, and of course, the one thing she... <laughs> Oh, this is so rigged. That dispel is so rigged with AI. Come on, if we can just get her butt out of here. Oh, see, we may we may actually get the struggle bus, unfortunately. Ah, oh, see that big hit from R, man. That's all you need. Because there isn't a ton of damage output on this team. It's mostly around, you know, debuffs and stuff and just freaking Soleus so OP that um, man alive Ooh, I do not think we're going to eat this one out yeah I mean we lost two of our main damage doers so um, I mean just unlucky on the first bit because hard work was just such just a hair a hair slower the 90 l there wasn't able to get out the cheat death to mar um but as you can see we essentially coasted through that um this is the same team that i was able to get uh the three star with so uh just really got got unlucky with just turn order just being a hair too slow on 90 l and then of course she cleanses the taunt first turn out of five options, out of multiple buffs on Tromgar, literally if we want to get down to it, there's less than a 10% chance that it should have even attempted it. So that's why I've said you can try and put some potent, uh, some tenacity there. She only has her normal amount of potency at gear 11. Um, so it's, it's certainly not an unreasonable amount, but you would really need to load up on tenacity. And as you saw, our Tromgar got killed more than once. It was the cheap death that brought him back. Uh, twice and uh, so I mean health you really kind of do need all the health you can get on him 
the debuffs aren't particularly a problem there. So that's why I recommend running complete with health and just assuming that you're you just banking on the fact that you're not going to get that under 10% chance that you will still get given because AI is rigged. Um, but anywho, so now you've seen it. Uh, this is the team that uh, I was able to use in order to um, uh, get this three-star run. So uh, for everyone who's like, man, do I have enough? Do I have enough? Do I have enough? I've got these characters. You know, I've got hard work. If you don't have hard work, you're going to need some gear tens. Um, if you were going to run with Rantha, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you with that fix, because you saw she just, she nukes characters. She just nukes them and she will cleanse the taunt Tromgar. Before she wasn't cleansing the taunt or dispelling the taunt Tromgar and she wasn't one shot on people as often because she didn't have the attack buff on. But now she has it. You're probably going to need Trom Tromgar. is probably the most important person to get to gear 10 if you're going to put someone to gear 10. Unfortunately, his gear 10 is pretty rough. Um, he's got the the uh, the keystone. He's got two shackles. He's got a bay ace. He's got a curse madness. And he's got the, what's the gate? Knight's gate. Um... That's not, it's all good gear, you know, other than, you know, this is, this is not bad. Um, it's a little more on damage, which is not what he needs, but, um, as well as this guy. But, um, it's all good gears. It's all going to be nice little stat boost. But if you're going to gear 10 someone, Tromgar is going to be, even with the cost, Mortha and Tromgar. Mortha is actually the squishiest person for the most part, at least how I have her built. Um... And, but she is a super easy gear 10. Look at this. All of it completely farmable. I'm being sure the Dragon Eye takes a lot of, particularly these guys, if you're not too far in that uh, challenge yet, and these little Magician's Top Hat too. So it takes a lot of those, but it's completely farmable um, outside of raids, outside of the shop. Um, so if you're kind of like, uh, I got Rantha, bring your Charm Guard to gear 10, bring your Morph to the gear 10, Try to have peeps around gear nine. Uh, Mar is not bad to gear nine. Just basically you think he needs like one shackle. It's not bad at all. Um, Corkrum just needs a, a curse madness. Um, but obviously having hard work makes this so much easier um, because of I mean the, it's it's the, it's these two right here. You don't even need again. You don't even really need this as bad. You need it more whenever you're against. Um, Night EL, just in case. It's like a really untimely ability block. It can really help to have it dispelled from him here. It's not as big of a deal uh, for this. but So, anywho, I hope this is useful to you, especially those of you guys who are getting a bit uh, a bit closer to, like, hey, man, like it's right here at the wire. I don't know if I can do it or not. Uh, this is, I was able to do it here. I was able to do it here. So, and again, my recommendation, if you are running with Rantha, I'm still trying to keep guys pretty low. So there's some more testing I want to do at year nine for various things before I start bumping people up. Um, but I would think that if you bump up Tromgar to year 10, if you bump up more to the year 10, um, that this is, uh, this is much more achievable at these ability levels. So, uh, and this is just to show you real quick. This is what I have on Rantha. What I advise running around is speed and health. Um, these, this gives you the, the bulkiest battle poo, gives her a little more damage on this primary. This really does not do much until you get to the higher levels and I, I she, her job is not damage. It's not that great. Um, I, gear four is kind of like the last big one because it's where you get the increased lifesteal. You can certainly go higher. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is not super useful because the battle poo dies real fast. Like anytime there's an AOE, she, if, which is the only time she's going to take damage if Battle Poo's not taunting. Battle Poo's going to get crushed every time you use him, because you use him to stall whenever Tromgar's there, so you can leave this at one. It's going to do nothing for you in this event, but dragged on long enough. Have a good one.